How Green Was My Valley, a 1941 classic, takes you on a poignant journey through a Welsh mining community. The narrative unfolds with a mix of humor, shock, and sorrow, ensuring that every moment keeps you hooked. Have you ever been deeply impacted by this film? Or can you recall the first time you experienced its compelling story? As you delve into the tale of familial bonds, labor struggles, and the ever-changing landscape of life, you'll encounter moments that resonate with the funny, the shocking, and the heartbreaking. Stay tuned for a roller coaster of emotions. Now, we're curious, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this timeless cinematic gem? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a journey that transcends time and place as How Green Was My Valley unfolds its narrative layers. Share your thoughts and let the conversation begin. How Green Was My Valley is a film that hasn't received the recognition it deserves despite being a compelling portrayal of a working-class family's life at the turn of the 19th century in the harsh mining communities of the Welsh Valleys. The movie touches on the political theme of the conflict between miners and their employers, a factor that may have led to its underappreciation by some critics. Additionally, the sentimental portrayal of the idealized working-class family, though now unfashionable, doesn't diminish the film's powerful depictions. Directed by John Ford, the film effectively immerses the audience in the life of a small community constantly on the edge of disaster. It has been regarded as one of the most powerful emotional experiences, often evoking a strong emotional response. Despite occasional criticisms of its political theme and sentimental portrayal, the film's impact was such that it was withheld from British television during the 1984-1985 miners' strike, emphasizing its enduring significance. On the other hand, there are dissenting opinions. Some viewers, like those living near the Welsh border, have expressed disappointment in the film's depiction of Wales. They argue that the mostly American actors attempting Welsh accents that often sound more Irish or even pseudo-Swedish create a disconnect. The film's attempt to avoid looking like a Western sometimes leads to unintended associations, making it difficult for those familiar with Wales to fully embrace the story. While acknowledging the film's shortcomings in its transition from book to screen, some reviewers feel that without preconceived expectations, it offers decent entertainment value. It's clear that opinions on how green was my valley vary, with its impact shaped by factors such as familiarity with the source material and the Welsh culture. In conclusion, how green was my valley remains a subject of diverse opinions, with some recognizing its power and others critiquing its authenticity. As with any film, individual experiences and perspectives play a significant role in shaping one's appreciation for the narrative and portrayal. This review aims to present a balanced perspective on the film, acknowledging both its strengths and weaknesses. Roddy McDowell, having recently arrived in the United States from the UK amid the Blitz, landed the lead role of Hugh in How Green Was My Valley within just two weeks. Evacuated with his mother and sister, McDowell swiftly immersed himself in the production. Among the cast, Sarah Allgood posed a challenge for director John Ford. Disagreeing on the viability of a scene, Allgood voiced her concerns. Ford, known for his pragmatic approach, called in writer Philip Dunn, who promptly removed the disputed scene from the script, declaring, now it plays. Ford, addressing Allgood, remarked on the writer's reluctance to assist, forcing them to proceed as originally written. The film's mining village set, modeled after Sarig Sinan and Clydach Kumta, cost 110000 to construct. Massive blocks of coal, each weighing over a ton, were imported for mine construction. To convey a coal slag-covered landscape in the opening and closing scenes, Ford opted for a practical solution, painting the hillside black. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a glimpse into the challenges and resourcefulness involved in bringing How Green Was My Valley to life, showcasing the swift casting of McDowell, the pragmatic handling of on-set disputes, and the meticulous construction of the mining village set. All these elements contribute to the film's historical context and cinematic legacy. John Ford, known for his efficient filmmaking approach, employed a unique method in creating How Green Was My Valley. He edited the film as he shot, ensuring nearly every take made it into the final cut. Ford, adhering to his practice, seldom exceeded three takes per scene. Notably, the movie diverges from the book, omitting two of Hugh's sisters, Saradwen and Olwen. This streamlined approach focused on the central narrative, deviating from the source material. 
During a mining scene, actress Maureen O'Hara's Keen, I spotted an anachronistic craft basket, disrupting the period authenticity. Correcting the oversight halted production, with Ford closing the set and instructing O'Hara to wait. An hour later, upon her return, the scene continued with the basket appropriately swapped. These behind-the-scenes insights underscore Ford's filmmaking methodology, the adaptation choices, and the meticulous attention to historical detail in how green was my valley, shaping its distinct character and narrative integrity. Donald Crisp and Sarah Allgood seamlessly embodied the roles of parents in the 1941 film. John Ford, recognizing their aptitude, cast them as his first choices for the father and mother characters. The film's casting process demonstrated Ford's discernment in selecting actors who authentically portrayed the familial dynamics central to the narrative. At the age of 20 during filming and 21 at the film's release, Maureen O'Hara brought youthful energy to her role. Her keen observation during a mining scene where she spotted an anachronistic craft basket showcased her attention to historical detail. This incident not only interrupted production, but highlighted the commitment to accuracy in the film's portrayal of a bygone era. John Ford, known for his pragmatic approach, praised Philip Dunn's script as nearly perfect. This endorsement speaks to the meticulous planning and execution involved in bringing the film to life. Ford's efficient filmmaking method, editing the film as he shot, further underscored his commitment to a streamlined and focused narrative. In summary, the cast's impeccable fit, Maureen O'Hara's attention to detail, and Ford's admiration for the script contributed to the unique character and integrity of the film. These insights shed light on the deliberate choices made during the production of this cinematic work. Constructed over six months by 150 builders, Richard Day's elaborate set design for How Green Was My Valley stands as a testament to meticulous craftsmanship. The mining village set, costing 110,000, authentically mirrors Seregsinen and Clydach Kumtaw. Massive coal blocks, each weighing over a ton, were imported for the realistic mine construction. The film's attention to detail extended beyond set design with practical solutions like painting the hillside black to convey a coal slag covered landscape in key scenes. The film's authenticity is further emphasized through the incorporation of genuine Welsh tunes in the soundtrack. Male voices singing traditional Welsh songs, including the iconic men of Harlech at the opening, contribute to the movie's cultural richness. These musical elements add depth to the narrative, immersing the audience in the Welsh setting. Earning an impressive 10 Academy Award nominations, How Green Was My Valley set a record as the most nominated film of its year. This recognition underscores the film's impact and cinematic significance. John Ford's unique approach to filmmaking, editing the film as he shot, further solidified its streamlined and focused narrative, deviating from the source material to highlight the central storyline. In summary, How Green Was My Valley's construction, authentic soundtrack, and record-setting nominations encapsulate its historical significance and cinematic prowess. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a glimpse into the dedication and creativity that shaped this impactful film. Darrell F. Zanuck secured the film rights to How Green Was My Valley for 300000 a significant investment reflecting the anticipation surrounding the adaptation. The novel's author, Richard Llewellyn, initially claimed personal ties to the Welsh mining community, but investigations revealed otherwise. Born in England, Llewellyn gleaned insights from conversations with local mining families, questioning the authenticity of his proclaimed connection to Wales. Alfred Newman's acclaimed score for the film showcased Welsh melodies and featured numerous Welsh singers in Southern California. However, the principal love theme, highly praised, drew inspiration from the traditional Irish folk song The Sixpence, diverging from the expected Welsh influence. This musical choice added a unique dimension to the soundtrack, enriching the film's auditory experience. These behind-the-scenes details unveil the financial commitment, questionable authorship claims, and the unconventional musical choices that shaped How Green Was My Valley. The intricacies of adaptation, coupled with the blend of Welsh and Irish influences, contribute to the film's distinctive narrative and cultural resonance.